So with regarding the topic of using welding cable as power cable in a car audio build, I like it. I've used both in the past, but what really turned me is one, actually one of my favorite reps that I deal with. I asked him what's the difference back in the day, a couple years ago, and he's like, well, that's welding cable. It will melt under your, under your engine compartment, blah, blah, blah. It's not as high quality. It's not meant to go in engine compartments. And I'm like, he's like, all the solvents and stuff in there. I'm like, okay. Think of myself. The worst thing in there is gasoline. Everything else is, unless it's a special clean you use in a standard under the hood, it's gasoline. It's the worst thing. You shouldn't have gasoline anywhere. But that's besides the point. Heat and abrasion were the two that he brought up. And so I have four different types of cable here. We're going to do a little test it's on them. We're going to do an abrasion test with a belt set. With, I'm not sure exactly yet, but we're going to start with the heat test here. So the four contesters are Power Star number two welding cable, which I use to build amp kits that are four gauge equivalency. I, li I like upsizing, but really it's bigger and you could run more power through it. And then we got Walmart brand. This is a KCA power cable for number four rated. There's no branding on it. It's really cheap stuff. Then we've got, this is a Stinger piece, another four gauge piece from Stinger. I'm not 100% sure if it's OFC tine, tine with copper, or excuse me, tine with tin, or if it's copper clad aluminum, but it looks like tine copper. And then we got this KCA, copper clad, Kuru KCA, a copper clad aluminum from um, Kuru Concepts on Amazon. Spare piece there. So let's jump into it. So here we have our heat test. We have our heat gun on high, pointed directly down at the steel plate. I've had it running for a bit here. So on the infrared, we are 126, 128, that range, degrees centigrade. And we're gonna start with the Walmart piece of cable. I'm just gonna put it right under there. And we're gonna see what happens. Visual smoke within the first 10 seconds. Melted black plastic. We can leave it here for a little bit. So it's probably been about a minute and a half here. Oh, now you can really see the smoke coming off of it. I'm going to fucking turn on an exhaust fan. Fucking smoke alarms. So my smoke alarms just shut off, got the exhaust fan on, sorry for the hard hearing. Going within with the stinger piece here. Still up the temp. About the same time, we're gonna stop her here and pull her out. Oh no, we're getting some glowing action under there. Look at that. The Walmart one never did that, and but this has gotten like probably 20 seconds longer. We've got some flame action. Okay, it's time to quit. interesting on the uh, KCA the insulation heated up and like heat shrunk back exposing a decent amount of copper there was a little nick there that's why I stretched but look at that that's what I really don't like to see and I thought this was like a decent brand of power cable too I guess not so we're about to go forth with the welding cable little tech check here on the temperature She's gone up the plate about 157. So I, I 
hypothesize that the air that's actually coming out of this is more like 180 degrees centigrade to 200 degrees centigrade or possibly hotter so remember it's not it's quite hot hotter than you probably run into under your hood unless you're right near an exhaust manifold anyways let's see how this fares For about eight minutes in or so, I really wasn't keeping track of time to experiment. But there's not really a visual visual change in the insulation. And for heat reference, I'm gonna try and get the top of the cable. 196, 200 degrees centigrade. Plate even hotter. Gun even hotter. This is definitely the most extreme test so far because it's been on the longest. But I'm gonna poke the insulation with this chisel and I'm gonna give you my response. The insulation is sl quite slightly melty and charred, which is honestly helping it out by the charring is like you know, rolling around here a bit. She just burned the outside. It was almost like it was protecting the inside. So far, by heat, this is definitely the best of them all. Okay, so now that we can talk without that exhaust fan. But the welding cable is still really hot in the fingers. But I did some scraping with the file. This is while it's still hot. It's, it's, it's I'm not pressing that hard because it's really hot and I can't hold it. But that welding cable is doing pretty good. We've got the KCA stuff which is the least, the worst in my opinion for this test. Just right down to bare copper, it's stretched out. This is cold, it's all charred. Insulation, heat, worst. Stinger, not horrible actually. But like, not bad. And the Walmart stuff is just crispy AF. It's actually quite decently strong under there. Yeah, so that's the heat tests. Let's try an abrasion test now. So for this abrasion, it's I don't really have a very scientific way of doing this. So I have four more samples. So uh, we're just gonna do the abrasion and it's gonna be my more my interpretation of how it is. So, this is 40 grit sandpaper by the way. But anyways, Kuru Concept stuff. Rubbing it in my hands. Seems like pretty resistance, very flexible cable. The Stinger stuff, thicker, insul th thicker insulation, slightly less but still excellent abrasion in the hand resistance. The Walmart stuff, best. I'm not able to rub anything off or at all and it's, it's also not very flexible, but the welding cable, a little bit of a downside. In the hand, it's almost like in a little bit of, a, like it has a little bit of like an eraser type texture, which is a downside of using welding cable in this application because it is, in that asset essence, the insulation is slightly not as good. I don't see it being a real issue though, if you install properly. But yeah, I can rub a little bit off. But anyways, to the sandpaper. At random, in no specific order, picking out the Walmart cable. Not bad due to how thick it is. Are down to the time threads there. That one's out. So the KCA. I'm doing my best to be as fair here. Oh, whoa, that was fast. In there, done. That was, it's quite thin insulation. Stinger stuff. Slightly better than the Walmart stuff. The thickest insulation, but yeah, there we are. I pressed a little bit harder on that one, but these two are about equal on the abrasion. This failed the abrasion. Time for this welding cable that I've been rubbing with my hand for a bit here.
Yeah, see it's it's already down to the paper, it's paper lined. It is just, it's probably, if this was like a, if this was a nine, and this was a two, this would be a four. That's how I would rate them there. I'm gonna do a little bit more here. Yeah, but in any good installation, anywhere, yeah. I was just standing there for a little bit more. But I'm a big advocate to using uh, wire loom. Well, I don't know, people call this different things. But sleeving, I like to use it. It helps a little bit. It's not the best for like that, but definitely helps. But anyways, this KCA stuff failed me. Welding cable, not horrible. These two did better than expected. Third and final test, we're gonna pinch each cable in the vise here. I'm gonna try and be kind of fair with it. Tighten that up pretty good. We're going to grab this guy. And use her as a cheater bar. This is a jack handle. I could do the math and tell you how hard this is actually pinching, but I'm not going to because I don't know. I'm not interested really. Um, I'm gonna go like this, put on the end here, and we're gonna try and put all my weight on it. This one will stop more. Basically until I can't get it with this anymore. Urch, urch. That's not that horrible, but it's not that great. Okay. Yeah, this handle is not a cheater bar, that's for sure. I just gonna have to take my word on how hard that is. Yeah, not too shabby. That almost held my whole weight trying to take that off. You can hear all the fibers going back in. Focus, you fuck. Ah, more stealing from that guy. Holes in the insulation. Not that great, but what do you expect? Next, Walmart cable. Same deal. Let's go. Ooh, or cheaper than that stuff. Cheater's cheater bar. Okay, so right around the same difficulty. It happens to be about the same spot in the vise too, but same difficulty to push it. Let's take her out now. No holes in the insulation this time. Better than the stinger stuff. KCA. Something just broke. I think it was my vice. I wasn't even pushing that hard, and this is the record. Yeah, insulation torn. Yep, so I just broke my record vice. Boom, done. From tightening that like that. And I've tightened it way tighter with that and stuff, but I don't think the beginning of the issue was from this here. I think it already had a crack because where it split here, you see this darker area? That's probably because of some sort of, like something was able to leak into the crack. So I don't think that it broke just because of this. It probably broke on a previous pounding and we just finished the job. But yeah, that's sucky. Bit of a shitty conclusion to this. 
Um, yeah, so I guess we don't really get to pinch the welding cable, but... That's so shitty, but I have no other vices, so... I guess, uh... I would hypothesize that it's... I have no idea, honestly. We're, okay, we're gonna try something here. Uh, so to do our best, I got two plates here from another project with a bolt in the middle, an impact, and a socket. And we're gonna squeeze this thing this way and see what it looks like. Now, that's pretty damn tight, but it's so it's unfortunate that we can't have like direct comparisons for, with the record, but. I've put a lot on there. That's probably the full thing of this tool, which is 210 foot-pounds of, of torque. She ain't moving anywhere. That's better than I expected, but of course it's not a direct comparison, so make of it what you will. Definitely the best on the squeeze test. But, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Not, not a perfect direct comparison, because I broke the fucking vice. So, those are the tests I did. They kind of just reassured my opinion on a couple things, and gauge, it's a good gauge, but, there's a couple other things that in cost, performance, like uh, tin coated OCF, OCF, oxygen, oh, OFC, excuse me, I'm an idiot, I can't do acronyms, but uh, that's nice, it really helps with corrosion, but like the welding cable doesn't have that, but if you properly terminate the ends, you should have no problem. If it's done properly, you should have no problem. If it's not done properly, you could potentially run into wear issues, heat issues, it's, I think it's a much better product for that running near headers and stuff like that if you need to. Um, otherwise, it's really just cost to performance. For example, when I was pricing out one ot for my Explorer build, my person who I bought most of the stuff through, who I felt I would, I still deal with him, he's a great guy, but he said the best he could do on one ot wireds, OCF, OFC, I'm sorry, excuse me on that part, is I think it was like 950 a foot and it was very similar, it was kind of like a mix between the Cougar Concepts and the Stinger insulation here and then I'm like okay I'm going to see what the welders want and uh, Active Rental, the rental place around here, they wanted I think it was $3.50 a foot and I'm like fuck yeah I'll take that and take the savings and put them in something else and terminate correctly and I've had no problems with it. So it's, it's what do you want, what are you trying to do with it, there's mixed feelings on it. I know people like big YouTubers throw out some names like EXO, he uses, he orders welding cable in red and black. He says that openly. Probably a little bit better product than this ProStar welding stuff, but it's not a horrible product. Um, other people swear against it and say, oh just give the extra money to, uh, to, your, to, to support your favorite brand, whether it be like Sky High, blah, 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 whatever brand. And I'm like, wait a second. So you just justified overpaying for a product just to support the brand you like? No, you just admitted to being like the biggest fanboy I've ever seen. And I'm a fan of Rockford Fosgate because I like the products that I use from them. And I'm not gonna overpay for products that's not worth that. So that's why I use it. I like it. Thanks for watching.